Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to talk about this little guy, but not quite about this little guy. So I picked this up the other day. Well, I've had it for a couple months, actually. And because of its odd configuration, it really doesn't have a good place to sit, especially in a pegboard situation. Now, a little bit about what this is. It's kind of cool because it's uh, obviously a power driver. You know, it takes the standard quarter-inch bits. It's got two lights, but it also has... Um, a line sensor here so you can hold this button push it up against uh, put it near a uh, electrical outlet and it'll tell you if it's hot so that's kind of cool then it also has a stripper here so you can put the wire in strip it and plug it in so it's really handy for household electrical work and just general projects uh, I like the fact I can hold and, and control the rotation by this and it charges by micro USB so pretty cool little tool I think anyway I have a link for this down below if you're interested in one of these also. But uh, the main thing is, is it, it's odd shape. So I want to be able to hang this on the pegboard. So how did I solve this problem? Well, I tell you what. Let's hop into the computer and I'll share with you how I designed a solution for this. And then we'll meet back here at the end and take a look at it. Okay, so we're in the computer now. And I've scanned the... Um, power screwdriver uh, just on a standard flatbed scanner and you, you can notice because it's three-dimensional uh, it's kind of blurry but it gives me the rough outline of the shape now what I did is I put in some guidelines throughout here just to kind of allow me to transition um, my curves a little bit because what I did is I used the drawing tool the Benzier drawing tool to actually draw the lines now if I go over here to the points you can see the points where I have in here and so I've got the rough shape now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to export this as an SVG file into Tinkercad and then I'm going to use this as a hole to a block uh, so I can slide this in so tell you what let's jump over to Tinkercad and let's bring this into Tinkercad okay so now we're in Tinkercad now what I've done is I've actually gone to Thingiverse and I have a customizer out here to create custom sized pegboards so you can just go here and what I did is I created a pegboard and imported it uh, this pegboard happens to be 60 by 160 and so I've now imported the STL into Tinkercad now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my SVG file and uh, here it is, power driver. Now, as I've shared before, Tinkercad gets a little bit weird on shapes and sizes because it thinks it wants, you want to do it as, as uh, pixels. So I'm just going to put in 500, just to, in other words, just to get it to an, a size that it imports because it's going to be actually too small. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to resize it. Now, this came out pretty big, but uh, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the ruler in onto the work plane and then I'm going to adjust it because uh, in real life this is going to be 39 millimeters and then this is going to be um, what is this going to be if I can read my own writing here this is going to be 76.95 tall let's just go ahead and double check that number so yep 76.935 is the height and so that's what we'll put in here 76.93 whoops not two five three five probably doesn't matter in that realm uh what we're going to do is i'm also going to kick this up to about 45 because we're going to turn this guy into a hole so we want to knock it out um so, so it uh it completes a complete hole the thickness of the power driver itself now one of the things i'm going to do here is i'm going to bring in uh, a cube and I'm gonna make this cube oh let's say for grins and giggles the same size so we're gonna make this cube 60 wide and uh, would we say that this guy was what 76 so I'm gonna make this guy um, let's make him about 80 tall and let's put him in here um, and I think that's uh, okay and then what I want to do is I want to bring in a cylinder and I'm at the living a little bit here so I want to flip the cylinder round by 90 degrees I want to give it a whole bunch of sides and if I can drag that up there that's good uh, now I'm going to make this 80 also 
And then I'm also going to give it the same diameter as I did the block over here. And the block over here, I gave it a diameter of 60. So I'm going to give this guy also 60. And then I'm going to give it a height of 60 also. I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, I might have to cut part of this off. And then what I want to do is, let's see, I made this guy 45. Uh, 45 tall, so I want to make this probably about this whole structure about 50 tall. So this is uh, 60 tall, and so I need to make this about 30 tall to be halfway. I'm just thinking here, so I'm at 20, so I'm going to make this at 30. And it's not going to quite, well, I'm going to have to bring this down. I'm just trying to think how to do this yet. So I'm at three, three millimeters here. So what I'm going to do is this is touching the base. So I'm now going to, well, I'm going to have to raise this guy up by three millimeters. So he sits on the top. And then what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to make, have to make this 33 millimeters to make it halfway. And then hopefully what I'm going to do is do this and let's do some quick aligning here. I may have to readjust it, uh, but I want to at least get things squared away, pardon the pun. All right, so that's about how it looks. It seems like I could maybe go a little bit less on the, um, on the top. So one of the pieces I want to do is I want to turn this into a hole and then I want to just bring this over here just to see what this all looks like as I punch a hole in this. Um, and I may have to shorten this up a little bit. I just want to align this right like this. And... I am going to shorten this up a little bit. So I was at 76. So I'm going to drop this down to 70, 70, 74. Let's go. And we'll also do the cylinder at 74. And then let's go ahead and do some aligning on it again. So we're already centered. Let's center it there. And uh, let's call that OK. So we're popping out both sides. And so what I want to do is I want to get out of my uh, thing. And then I just want to, whoops, I want to lower everything down. want to bring that back up. Just want to lower my block piece down. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three of these pieces, and I'm just going to slide this down. And the reason I'm doing this is I want the handle to stick up uh, above the um, block that retains it, and then have part of it stick below uh, in the in the model itself. So, all right, let's. I want to do one more simple align and see how this uh, comes out. Just make sure, so I got it centered there. I look good, so let's go see how this all comes out. All right, so this is how roughly it should look, and it should hold it in there. Um, so now all we have to do is go print it out and see if it really worked. So let's head over to the printer and see if it really worked. Okay, so here we are back. So now this first one is the one you saw me design. So uh, again, this is the first round. And one of the things I wanted to kind of show with this a little bit at, in the end here is uh, the design is an iterative concept. So this was the first one I came up with, as you saw in the design. And it was sort of okay. It's a little bit tight fit because of the expan expansion. I'll spit it out of plastic. Uh, it does fit in here. Uh, I made it a little bit deeper than it needed to be, um, as you can kind of see here. Uh, and, and also, it takes a lot of plastic. So what I did is I just went back and I did a second iteration of this, just modifying the original file, making this opening one millimeter larger. Uh, 
And then also knocking these extra holes in here because I really don't need a lot of strength here. Just going to hold it to the uh, pegboard by these clips here. I'm going to go through these two holes. So these holes are eh, a little bit artistic in design, but it takes a lot of plastic and print time out of this. So, um, you know, the difference not only is this smaller, uh, but uh, with these holes took like an hour and a half less print time for this than did this. And obviously substantially less plastic yet, but this the two are simply as durable for the application. So this is something to think about in your design process. Uh, the other pieces I had decided after looking at how rough and jagged this piece was to actually flatten this out a little bit. And that's what I did on this one. So it's very clean and you can kind of see here, not kind of, you can see. So it slips in far easier. Just kind of slips right in. Holds it in place. So I can actually even turn it that far over and it stays in, but it comes in and out just that easy. So really came out uh, really happy with the design. And again, it can sit in there like that. And then these hooks, if I can pick them up here off the table, um, you know, we'll loop in like this and they'll just sit, you know, sit in the pegboard like this and hold it to the board. Uh, or you can take screws, screw this into drywall or wood or whatever you want. So that's kind of the other beauty, uh, beauty of the design is very flexible. So, anyways, uh, hopefully you found this interesting and you learned something, too, uh, about design. Because, again, that's what I'm kind of trying to share in these videos. And uh, if you did, hey, hit that thumbs up button. I definitely appreciate it. Also, let me know in the comments below if you got questions or you have something else you'd like to see me design. Always happy to hear about what you guys are thinking out there. And uh, don't forget the subscribe button and swag shop up over there. Holiday season's coming. A lot of great stuff out in swag shop for makers. And, hey, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.